the road trip. Van, van vlog mobile in action. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these guys. I'm leaving Willis, Texas right now. Heading down old highway 150. Actually, I'm on 1097. Some of you know this area. I'm on 1097 and it's about to T into highway 150. I'm gonna take a right. I'm gonna go toward some real old country towns and head, head over there by the Livingston Dam the spillway all, where all the good fishing's at. So having not anticipated going on a road trip till last night, don't really have it, didn't really have anything to, to talk about. I'm in the middle of doing several different videos. But I did see an interesting comment this morning which it's a comment that I see a lot when people, if you, the people hit that wall and come to my channel. And there's this, I don't know, there's this destitution that rises up in people. Yeah, I get it. You've been exposed to so much bullshit material. By the time you make it into the corridors of archaics, you're already jaded. And I totally understand that. Totally understand that. So we get a lot of this, we get a lot of comments from people uh, uh, all history is fake or uh, what good are all those old books you got it's all fake, it's all, it's all bullshit and that's not true, it's not true at all do I believe that the historical record actually happened no I don't and I've given reasons for this I believe it's all programming and whatever did actually happen, happened somewhere else this is backdrop programming for the life for the life we live right now. Listen, history is no different than the study of an astronomer looking into the heavens. The simulacrum is going to produce the minutia in the details to comport with the level of scrutiny that is applied. In the archaics research, I have gone deeper into the historical record than any other researcher that I know. You guys mentioned different guys, different people to me. I've read most of them. I haven't seen anybody that that pulls all the data and collects the material and puts it together like I haven't. I haven't met them. I haven't seen them yet. Do, are, are other uh, are other researchers out there putting out some really good material? Yes. Has anybody put together a really good unified, like a unified field theory of everything? Some of you guys mentioned Campbell and his my big toe theory and all that. You know what? I read some Campbell. Really wasn't impressed. I'm sorry if that sounds egomaniacal to you guys, but <clears throat> there are channels dedicated to pushing Campbell's material, and that's fine. But but uh, just like Douglas Vogt, many of you sent me emails about Douglas Vogt. Try to tell you guys this 12,000 year old cycle, which is pushed by many other channels too. If you saw what it looked like in a chart with the entire historical record and all the disasters that human humans have recorded and how they fit mathematical patterns looks on charts like I've provided and then you make a chart small enough to where you could fit 12,000 years ago at the beginning of that chart it's going to show you this vast gulf of time for which archaeology, paleoanthropology, paleobotany no one has any details to fill the span of time before the beginning, right before the beginning of the historical record in the 34th century BC, all the way to 12,000 years ago. The span of time is almost ridiculous. All, the only thing that can be relied on by anybody pushing that narrative is science. And over and over and over, the same people are always showing us how science can't be trusted, can't bullshit. Every single relative dating method has been proven wrong over and over and over. Charles Ford said it best, and I'm going to quote him again like I quote him all the time. Who would not be a prize marksman if only his hits were recorded? This is what we have with scientists. You can't cite 61 samples of radiocarbon dating or potassium argon dating and then turn around and publish 14 samples of radiocarbon dating prove that, that such and such and such, such occurred at this time and this deposit was laid down at this time. You had to omit 30-something samples in order to say that those 14 samples prove that. This is what you get from the scientific community all the time. 
I'm exposing them in my videos all the time. It's all bullshit. You cannot rely on scientific dating. Therefore, no one can rely on ice core dating. It's already been shown temper temperature differentials have produced multiple layers in the same year. This is why scientists about 24 years ago had to finally put an end to using dendrochronology. Dendrochronology relies on the study of tree rings. Those tree rings theoretically were supposed to show us individual years in, in the historical record for which it showed us different clim climatic changes. Now we know it's all bullshit. The reason is, is many areas of the world and many, many different species of trees grow two in three rings a year according to uh, the rain seasons. So, and if a third, if a third like real rainy period happens in a year, it will produce a third ring. And all these books that were published in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and early 90s that were relying on dendrochronology to support ice core dating have now been disproven. And yet all these YouTube channels, all these guys are steady putting out this bullshit that, that these methods are, 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 are still viable. So listen guys, I'm a, I'm a huge critic of almost everybody out there. Yes, it puts me, it puts me in, a, in a totally different world, but I don't care. I don't care about being hated on. I don't care about being censured. What I'm really looking for, for what I'm really looking for, you know, for is somebody who thinks they have the ability to assess all the chronological data, especially on my Phoenix phenomenon, the 138 year periodicity. And why don't you critique that and put that on your YouTube channels so I can give answer? Because my best, my, my true erudition will come out when I'm being attacked. So I'm looking for that. Now, I'm not looking for a moron to attack me. Anybody, I've already got that happening. There's like eight, eight or nine different channels that are putting out stupid videos about me. That's fine. I see that all. That doesn't bother me because from, I treat archaics, I have to treat archaics as a business as well. And from a purely marketing perspective, all my haters are doing is expending a tremendous amount of energy, which is bringing more, me more subs. I'm all about spiritual alchemy. I'm going to turn all negatives into positives. But what I really need is one of these, one of these Facebook educated, YouTube educated individuals to sit here and attack, attack my Phoenix phenomena, put a video on YouTube. I don't care, make me sound stupid, do whatever you need to do. Because when I am being attacked on something that, that concerns intellectual property and, and findings or something that I have so much sourced back material, that right there would give me the fuel to go ahead and, hey, you know what? I'm going to unleash. Because I still have a lot of Phoenix material that are all in my notes, uh, all scattered in all my notes that I haven't even produced on YouTube yet. And those of you who have ordered my Super Pack and have gone deep into the, the Chronicon notes on the Super Pack, you know that. There's a lot of material on the Phoenix that's all spread throughout Chronicon because when I wrote Chronicon, I wasn't really anticipating writing a book about the Phoenix or even doing... I, when I wrote Chronicon, that was 15 years before I even anticipated I would ever uh, be a, have a YouTube channel. So there's still a lot of material in my notes I need to, I need to call forth, but the best way to do that is, is when I'm under scrutiny. Because, yeah, I man, there's a lot of weird theories on YouTube that I'm not buying, don't care, don't care about people being offended. You guys ask me, what about this, what about that? You know what? Sooner or later, I might just do a full roster of everybody on YouTube I think is absolutely full of shit and then call them out is ex exactly why I think you're full of shit. I've already done that for uh, Graham Hancock. So many people keep sending me uh, material about Graham Hancock. I'm really thinking about just calling the dude out. I don't think he'll meet me halfway, but I know this. All that bullshit in his books, all those, all that dating, all that theoretical ass bullshit, none of it's real. Absolutely none of it is real. Prior to the 35th century BC, there is no evidence anywhere in our world of writing, of anything in, uh, of anything in the written record. There's nothing. And all these impossibly long Egyptian dynasties weren't even that. It's been shown, it, it was shown 150 years ago in academia that those long, impossible dynasties, they were counting the same pharaoh over and over, not taking into consideration that they had milk names and throne names and dynastic names. They had they had uh, names that they had acquired by the people who had named them for uh, prowess on the battlefield. It's ridiculous. Yeah, 
That's why there has never been an Egyptian chronology ever published, and it, uh, because there isn't one. There never was one throughout the entire history of Egypt. They never kept a, cal a unified calendar, because timekeeping started all over again every time there was a new pharaoh. By the time Egypt fell and was no longer controlled by Egyptians, the Assyrians uh, had, a, had a calendar, but then they were taken over, and then they kind of fell away. Then the Persians kept the calendar in Egypt, but it wasn't an Egyptian calendar. It was it was it was the Persian calendar, the uh, the the uh, under Cyrus. And of course, the Macedonians Macedonians took over Egypt, but they didn't go by an Egyptian calendar. Even 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 when the Ptolemies were raised under Macedonia to take over Egypt, still used the Macedonian calendar. They were still using the Greek Olympiads, the Olympiad calendar. There was no Ptolemy dot timeline. So yeah, I mean, chronolo chronology is my thing. Chronology is how we find all the all these inter interesting details. So, guys, the devil is in the details. It's an old expression. It's not mine. You've all heard it before. But just like an astronomer stares up into the sky and stares up into space and does a... Uh, the more and more an astronomer builds his knowledge about what he sees in the skies... Now, remember, it's a stellosphere where he's looking into a hologram. The more and more details that hologram takes on, the more he can discover. The more he discovers and theorizes and cogitates over and publishes, the more the hologram produces more and more details for those who want to follow up on those discoveries and look at that same area of the sky. So the creation is not done. It continues on the more humans try to observe it. So we have, we have this we have this this structuring to history as well and I have shown you guys and mentioned many times that a very deep analysis of the analysis of the historical record the details don't matter it has shown us that there is a fixed geometry to the history of the world the study of chronology has allowed me to isolate particulars of the architecture of this this false and pseudo reality that we're confined in right now. I have many really good videos on chronology to show you all this. This is the value of studying many things in the historical record. The clues about our existence today and where we're heading are all in the historical record. You just gotta find them. It's easy to separate fact from fiction. There are so many different things. W.J. Perry in the 1920s, W.J. Perry spent over a decade of his life uh, studying a phenomenon that he, had, that he had discovered that was across the board in the ancient world. During the archaic civilization from about 19th century BC all the way to the uh, 17th century BC, about a 300 year period, the archaic civilization was his field of study. W.J. Perry <coughs> realized something very unusual and it led him down a rabbit hole in the 1920s. And he had access to many books that we don't have access today to do. And anybody can order W.J. Perry's books today because it's been re reprinted many times. I've read it. It's 551 pages. W.J. Perry's book is fascinating. And he goes into detail showing that all these civilizations under the Archaic period had the same ruling dynasties. They called themselves the children of the sun at the time. That's what they called themselves. So the children, the children of the sun, uh, these dynasties were, they were prolific throughout the whole Bronze Age. He documents them from the Americas all the way to, to uh, uh, Asia, Africa. He believes that the ruling center of empire was Egypt, but they had colonies that had turned into their own nations and empires elsewhere. And this is where his research gets really interesting. This is a huge book packed with a lot of archaeological and historical traditional detail. His conclusion in the book, and this is very precise, is that something, something very terrible happened to almost the entire world that collapsed all these dynasties at the exact same time. This event concerned the sun. All these dynasties collapsed 
and were never seen again. He says at about the year 1688 BC. This precision is astonishing for an author who is using materials in the year 19, from 1920 to about 1930 and put this thesis together. The beauty of this historian, W.J. Perry, is that he does not theorize as to what this was. He's just documenting the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. That's what Mr. Perry did. What Mr. Perry didn't know is that this exact same event is recorded by another historian who called it the Flood of Ogyges based off the historical record. Ancient ancient historical text, Greek writers also called it the Flood of Ogyges. The Flood of Ogyges, according to ancient text, was in the year 2208 of the Old World's calendar. Old World's calendar was called Anno Mundi or Annus Mundi. What W.J. Perry doesn't know is that Harold T. Wilkins, just a few years after him, we publish a, a series of books on the ancient Americas and put all these traditions together showing that this great vast celestial object appeared in the sky about the 17th century BC he said it well, he said it was this is the event of the Ogygian deluge this is very important detail the reason it's important is because the Ogygian deluge is absolutely positively dated by two ancient authors at the 2208th year of Annus Mundi. It is also dated to the year 1687 BC, precisely if by biblical chronologist Stephen Jones in The Secrets of Time, who shows a very, very in-depth analysis, chronological analysis of the biblical material and how it lines up with historical events of the secular record. And in his timeline, he shows, without knowing anything about the Ogygian Deluge, without knowing anything about uh, the collapse of the archaic civilization published by W.J. Perry, these two data sets are independent of Stephen Jones' work, The Secrets of Time. In The Secrets of Time, he published that the year 2208 Annus Mundi was the year 1687 B.C. Which leads us to an entirely third data set. That data set concerns biblical chronology that leads up to a great war between Jacob and his sons and the men of Shisham and the kings of, the, uh, of Canaan. And when Jacob prayed unto God for deliverance so that his sons could avenge the uh, uh, a crime against Dinah, their sister, that was caused by the men of Shisham, all of a sudden, the sun darkened. There was a great earthquake felt by the entire world. Stones fell from the sky. And the Canaanites were so discombobulated that the, that the inferior numbers of Israelites were allowed to destroy them, defeat them. In the book of Jasher, using only the chronal, the chronal markers found in the book of Jasher, this event is dated the 2208th year since Adam and Eve were banished from Eden. 2208 Annus Mundi, third data set. Amazingly, the flood of Ogyges is positively dated at 2208 Annus Mundi, which is the year 1687 BC. And it's astonishing that these three data sets combined with many other data points that I have provided shows the, the great maritime Heliolithic Empire ended, totally destroyed, everything gone. The children of the sun lost their faith in the sun. This is what W.J. Perry said. Something happened to the sun to where all these dynasties that went by the appellation of children of the sun, they lost their faith in it. They had to, so... This is a. Uh, this is very interesting. We know this as as we know this now as as the Phoenix phenomenon. That's what occurred. A fourth data set is the 138 year periodicity of the Phoenix phenomenon. It was 552 years after the Great Flood, which is 138 times four since the Great Flood, which was also caused 
by the Phoenix phenomenon, which made the vapor canopy collapse. So, four data sets all converge here in 1687 BC to show us it was the year 2208 Annus Mundi, the exact same date that's in Archbishop, our Archbishop James Usher's Antiquities of the World chronology. He got his AD and BC dates me messed up terribly in many of, 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 of his events. And this is why nobody follows Usher anymore. However, Usher did the same thing I did in Chronicon. He provides the BC AD dating <coughs> while equally next to it providing the Annus Mundi dating. And because Usher was recording the Annus Mundi dates taken from historical records, some for which evidently we don't have access to, because we don't know where he got that date from, but it perfectly comports with all the other data. He dated, he dated the Ogaijin Deluge in 2208, and that's all we need to know. Four different data sets. The 138-year uh, Phoenix phenomenon also lining up with this. Why is all this important? Harold T. Wilkins shows that it was this this event, the Ogaijin Deluge, which was caused by the Phoenix. This event right here is, is precisely in the ancient Americas, in all the traditions, it was a great sky dragon looking object. Some of them describe it as like a second sun, but much larger, it filled the sky. It blackened the sun. The stars could be seen in the, in the daytime. The moon turned red or looked like it was bleeding. Yeah, all the all this Harold T. Wilkins amassed traditions from all over the ancient Americas and the Mediterranean and put a picture together. Anybody can read it. It's in his books, Secret Cities of Old South America. And he's got another book too, I forgot what it's called. But his two books are phenomenal about this great event in the ancient world that changed everything. <laughs> because even after the collapse of the vapor canopy, the, the great flood, humans made a rebound. It took, you know, it took five, over five centuries, but humans have rebounded. They were building badass cities, but they were very different. They weren't like the older technolithic and post-technolithic structures. They were more like the heliolithic maritime empire structures, polygonal masonry, earthquake proofing their, their, their cities and structures and fortresses. So the historical record does have value. We do find all these amazing correspondences when we look at different areas of research, but they're all telling us the same thing, especially chronographically. When we find chrono markers that comport with each other from totally different traditions, languages, different areas of the world, we need to pay attention. You can no longer say all history is bullshit. That's bullshit. All history is bullshit. What are you talking about? We have we have four different data sets that have nothing to do with each other at all. And yet they all completely line up with 1687 BC. Yes, I will I will address the fact that WJ Perry specifically said about 1688 BC. But that's a one-year variance and he only provided an approximate. So to me, I'm gonna take that as 1687 BC, like all the other all the other ones. Some people might have a problem with that, but these, but the same people who will have a problem with that will go to another cha channel and accept their dating when they're plus or minus 500 years. That's a 1,000 year room for error. This is what scientists do. And people accept that bullshit all the time. Yeah, you know, man, it's, it is so, it's gotten so ridiculous. I listened to, I listened to a podcast from uh, Joe Rogan last night where he was, he was talking to Elon Musk. He asked Elon Musk about space and, all, and 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 stuff. You know what? The answers Elon Musk was giving him, an eighth grade student could have made those answers. They're totally in error, totally wrong. I don't know what Elon Musk's deal was. Then he asked him about uh, asked him about uh, population and all that, and Elon Musk said some shit. I just blew my mind because it's easily easily verifiable. It's not true. The birth rate is far exceeding the death rate right now all throughout the world. And everybody knows this. Even with the even with this this little issue that's been going on for two and a half years, that didn't increase. That didn't in, in, it didn't even it didn't even alter the statistics. A lot of people died. There's still more people being born. Elon Musk told Joe Rogan, 
And even Joe Rogan looked at him like, you're full of shit. But, uh, you know, I must told Joe Rogan that, that, that uh, oh, it's a common misconception. People don't know that, uh, you know, the death rate far exceeds the birth rate. Yeah, uh, overpopulation, overpopulation. This is what Elon Musk said. Overpopulation is no longer the issue. Now it's underpopulation. Bullshit. Crazy. You ain't been to Texas. I thought Elon was in Texas. You must not be here. Anyway. So all history is bull. All history of bullshit is, is basically the this is the defense mechanism that people invoke because one they don't want they don't want to learn more or they don't they don't want to go through all the deals. I understand, guys. People get triggered, man. It's very difficult to process just how much historical and chronological material and actual actual sources that are cited across the full archaic spectrum in my published books, my hundreds of articles, and now my almost 300 videos. <coughs> Excuse me, almost 400 videos. I get it. I get it. A lot of people triggered, hey man, there's no way one man could have done all this. Man, you know what? It's because you don't know my history. I sat in a prison cell for a very long period of time, and that's all I did. While you, while you went out and, and you were dating and you were doing family and societal obligations, just driving to and from work every day takes up a lot of your time. Imagine how much time when you're working almost 48 weeks a year, it's 52, 52 weeks in a year. Let's say you work 48, 48 weeks a year. Wow, that's 48 times five days. But that's 48 times five times two days that you're actually commuting. That's just working back. Add that up. Then add up all the times you're in, you're commuting to the store. You're going somewhere. Hobbies. You're dealing with your kids, children, all the things you do in life. Yeah, I get it. You didn't you didn't have time to do all this research. You didn't have time to assess all this data. I get it. But Jason did. I had and you know you get triggered because I have the receipts. I don't care. I've got a lot of channels hating on me. Join the club. Increase my subs. Anyway, it's just, that's the comment I saw this morning. That's basically what, basically what influenced this video. That, uh, why even bother? History's all bullshit. I'm going to bother. I'm going to continue to look. I'm driven to look. And in being driven to look, I found everything I found. 1687 BC was just one of the events that happens, happens on that 138 year timeline. I found so many more that are also cross-referenced that this tells me, okay, this is a fundamental piece of information about the architecture of our existence. This is it. This is what we need to know. I gotta slow down. I will pass up. I will mess around, pass up. 222. All right, there it is. Nobody's coming. Swing this tank, tank over here. Scenic ride. It's beautiful out here. <clears throat> might flip my, I might flip my camera around here just for a second so you guys can see. You're gonna see some beautiful lake here in a minute. You're coming on Lake Livingston. I'm in the hill country right now. Lake Livingston's at a lower altitude, much lower. I'll be going down some hills here in a minute. Oh, actually, this is, this is 222. Yeah, 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 that's right. I'm here. I should see water pretty soon. Not sure where it went. There it is. There's that water. I'll be going next to this huge dam and levee here in a minute. The levee's gigantic. I need to slow down. I'm going to slow down. I do not need to roll this tank. Yeah, he, 
History is valuable. The study of the historical record is valuable. Many things can be seen. Many, many discoveries can be made. Now, what we are discovering, I do not know. Did these histories actually happen? Are they a part of programming for us to discover, to find out where the programming is taking us? I don't know. I have no idea. But it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get destitute and, st and stop searching. I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to do that. I'm going to keep it on this right here because we're, we're about to pass this dam. I'm going to let y'all see that too. So yeah, there are some several interesting channels. Yeah, like a lot of you guys send me messages about Roger of Mud Fossil. Hey, you know what? I'm just, I've watched a few of his videos. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to process, you know, his theory. His, his, his theory is very interesting. But, I mean, I can't, I can't, I just can't process creatures that are miles, miles long or, or can stand. Yeah, I haven't found that's not that's I haven't found anything to comport with that in the historical record. You guys gotta understand, my thesis begins 5239 BC. I cannot go beyond that. I can theorize a little bit and I'll speculate, but it's that's all it is. And it's all science can do as well. Anything beyond the chrono markers, I don't know. I've never found a calendar that goes back beyond 5239 BC that can show me that it's been unbroken since the present. I've seen I've seen attempts. I've seen different his, historians put together material, and but there's a there's a hiatus that can't be. It's inexplicable. It can't be explained. If you can't explain why there's a lacuna in your theory, <coughs> then uh, I get it. And that means that this entire calendar was invented in retrospect to make a culture or a people appear more ancient than they actually are. This is what we have with a lot of researchers. I don't know what y'all can see or not. I got all kinds of stuff in the way. Show's over. We'll get back to this video. After I pass this turn, make sure I don't kill myself. I am going kind of fast. A lot of tanks and ponds out here by the lake. Overspills that just never dried up. Two twenty-two here. 222 tees off. I think if I go right, I'll go. I'll get to Goodrich. I ain't going right. This is 1988. On 1988, I go left. It's gonna take me straight to Livingston. That's where I'm going. Livingston, Texas. When I when I used to live in Livingston, Texas, I was a prisoner. I was I was located at the at the Terror Dome. That's what we used to call it. it used to be called Terror Unit probably never would imagine that way in the future I'd be on YouTube. Why Why would I never imagine it? Because I'd never been on the internet before. I was there I was there in 1993, 94, 95, 96, 97, and I, I, was, I left in 98. It's maximum, it's maximum security. Yeah, one day they just brought a whole bunch of buses because they got tired of it. All the riots, all the violence, guys killing each other. Finally, they just said, you know what, man, we can't take it. We're going we're gonna to separate all y'all and just send y'all to other max, maximum security prisons all over the area. And the, the prison had such a bad name. Maury Povich came and talked to us. <coughs> Dateline came and talked to us. Basically asking the prisoner what's going on. A lot of stuff was going on back then. I'm not really obligated to talk about it here. I'm not trying to protect prisoners. I'm not. I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is not get on bad terms with Texas. I love the state of Texas, but Texas prison administrators were doing some real, real shady stuff back then. 
because they were trying to they were trying to get some things accomplished concerning concerning economic packages and the only way to do that was to do certain things and they did it and they succeeded and they got the money <clears throat> but it cost a lot of people their lives it's a bad time but you know what all that's in the past for me yeah I got sent to the other side of Texas I was there when the Texas 7 escaped on Conley unit yeah East Ham <clears throat> famous for Bonnie and Clyde guys I've been there I done did it all in the past met some really good guys really good guys that were just caught up in a bad way prison's not full of a bunch of evil people but there are evil people there one thing about prison man you're gonna you're going to learn how to read people like a book you have to if you're gonna survive it's an excellent it's an excellent training ground to get you to smell bullshit to to separate fact from fiction it's an excellent place it's also one of the best places in the world to learn because there's nothing to do there but read if you're gonna if you're gonna take advantage of it so I have some really good I have some really good profound videos on the way they take a little time the two microphones that we got, uh, Matt and I got for our uh, the new studio, they suck. So I, I just got the same ones old Mr. Rogan got, Joe Rogan. I, I did a little homework and I found out which one he's got. He's got, and I, I ordered two of them off Amazon. That hurt my feelings because I sure didn't want to pay for those. But many of y'all have told me my, my audio is bad. And if I'm going to continue to do this full time, then I may as well go ahead and bite the bullet just pay for the pay for the pay for the microphone I can't I had no idea audio equipment could be that expensive that shocked me but it's okay that's that's done I'm waiting on those to get delivered and then then we're, we're, we're ready the whole the whole studio is set up now I'm gonna continue to do videos in my small studio that's got all my old books back there because I guys I have so many videos coming your way. Some of them reviewing those old books, but uh, not all of them. <clears throat> Man, not enough hours in a day. Not enough hours, guys. I want to do a live video. I think I'm going to go live tomorrow. Matter of fact, I am. Tomorrow's Monday. I'm going live tomorrow. I got on T-Mobile's ass about my, about my own. My, uh, my Wi-Fi signal. I don't know what they did, but they boosted it. My my signal is so good right now. I mean, how long is that going to last? I didn't know that every three or four months, all you got to do is call in and complain, and they reamplify your signal. Why don't you just Why don't you just leave it up? I don't, I don't understand all that. There are no satellites up there helping us with Wi-Fi and telephones, and it really shocks me that some of y'all still believe that. Some of y'all still believe this BS narrative that we have satellites up in space that are relaying signals. It's crazy. Just crazy. Yeah, I just, I'm just not buying it. Not buying it. Cause I can go, I can go right here out here on 222, and I can't pick up anything. Cause there, you know why? Not because there isn't satellites flying over that area in Texas. Satellites are supposed to be everywhere. I'm going to tell you why. It's because there's no relay towers out there. Because some of these country roads I live around, like 2296, real long, way out in the country. You go, go, it just goes almost almost to nowhere. There's nobody living. There's nobody living out there. There's no reason for the infrastructure to, to be extended to that area of Sam Houston Forest. I live at the edge of a gigantic national forest. And it's got roads that go through that forest, but there's nobody living back there. There's no there's no houses, no farms. There's whole areas, whole areas that are just nothing but trees, forest. There's no reason to have towers back there. And so there's so they haven't built them. So you have no signal. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a believer. I can understand many of you city dwellers, which I will never be. Many of you city folk. <laughs> Y'all believe that BS. 
because you haven't seen any contrary contrary information so I get that let me go ahead and trigger a few people with my, my sprite <sighs> come on guy I'm a little too big to just jump out there and y'all are going way too fast So we'll go live pretty quick. We'll go live tomorrow. I know I got, I know I know I have at least about 5,000 people new that, that came over from Nino's channel. That's fine. So I don't know what to think about what this guy did. Somebody sent me a link to a website that they built. I'm going to share it with you guys. I don't know what to think of it. Shocked me. I've been, I've been messing with it. I don't know. They want to remain anonymous. That was my first red flag. I don't really do well with people who don't identify themselves. YouTube is full of channels of people who have not really revealed who they are publicly. I don't. My first, my first 200 videos, my channel was called Jason Brashears. I didn't switch it over to Archaics until I started blowing up a little bit. And when I say blowing up, I got 3,000 subs. I switched it over to Arcades. But uh, there's a lot of channels where people conceal their identities for whatever reason. I've never done that. I knew what I, I, knew what I was signing up for. I knew people would dig in my past. I knew all that. I didn't care. But get over here. I got these, I got these big all-terrain tires on the van. I didn't realize how much louder they were going to be. They are loud. I'd still rather have them when I go off-road than anything else. So anyway, I'm up. I'm going to give you all the link. I'm going to post it so you can go play with it. But especially. And anybody can use this tool. But this man, he has to be a coder. He has to be a programmer. He designed a search engine for Archaic's channel. Shocks me. <laughs> a simple search bar. All you have to do, what do you want to know about? The Heliolithic Maritime Empire? What do you want to know about? The Phoenix Phenomenon? Dungeon Programming? Simulacrum? Do you want to go in depth? You want to you want to you want to know us some anytime I mention Eudoxus of night at nightus you want to know about Anaximander this man created a search engine website that's linked to all the content on my YouTube channel and I don't know how the hell he did this I've even asked a few other people you put anything you want in that search bar and it automatically pulls up the videos where I talk about that and shows you the text where I talk about it and gives you the timestamp where I'm talking about it. How the hell did he do that? <coughs> it is it is a phenomenal tool. It's amazing. I just have the whole problem with people remaining anonymous sometimes. Because I'm always, I'm always suspicious about Trojans. Trojans are, tro, Trojans are a tool of the intelligence community. And it's the intelligence community that, that, that likes to remain anonymous a lot. So, damn, Jason, you're just a conspiracy theorist. You're damn right I am. 100%. You just nailed me to a T. Nailed me to a T. I'm not worried about the common man. I'm not worried about what the common man thinks. Don't care about many people's feelings either. I'm going to say what needs to be said. But uh, when those alphabet agencies start getting in your business, it kind of makes you wonder why they would promote you, why, would, why they would push you, why they would help you. But I'm going to go ahead and pass it on because it's an excellent tool. I'm going to tell you 
He claims he did it because he values my content and he knows that he's not the only one frustrated when listening to me that I that I often answer questions to newbies that come onto the channel in my live chats that have already been answered in 15 to 20 prior videos. And I get that. I get tired of answering the same questions over and over again. I have said in earlier videos, at the risk of offending people, I have often said, listen, the the amount of material on my channel is to is to the point where I wish there was something that YouTube would allow me to do to disable comments from anyone who can't prove that they've watched at least 50 videos. Sounds like Jason's an asshole, I know. But you know, you have to look at the comment sections, guys. Those comment sections, not only do other people answer a lot of the quest basic questions that are always asked, go look at the comment sections for every video. I'm answering questions. Not only, in, not only in the comment sections, but in my live videos, I'm always answering the same damn questions over and over and over. <laughs> so this guy created a tool that is astonishing. I'm not talking about astonishing like that girl who's dancing to get people to send her money for her goats. I'm gonna send her some cash because I laughed my ass off when I when I, that girl, <laughs> Christina the astonishing, small world because I had no idea that uh, someone I consider a friend is actually a friend of hers. That really shocked me, man, it's a small world. I just reached out and saw that, that saw that name, clicked on it just to see who the hell is this, Christina uh, the Astonishing. Clicked on that name and saw that goat video, almost fell out of my chair laughing. Then she got some other good video where she does a Beastie Boys song. Oh yeah, that won it for me. Fantastic material, Christina. So I shared that on the channel, it's a post. But then I find out that her and Jay not only know each other, but they've taken pictures together. They're a part of the Archaics group out of Tampa, Florida. Small world, six degrees. I thought that was cool as hell. This is that same road that I was on before, guys. When I when I was doing a, a I was doing a van vlog just like this. And I know some of you, my Archaics veterans, remember this. I passed up a skinny black guy carrying a backpack in his hand and he had no shirt on and he was walking up, walking up, up the freeway and I didn't think nothing about it but y'all saw him in my camera because you mentioned it in the comments, it's still, the comments are still there and I'm talking, I'm just going off talking about different, different things and next thing I know, y'all saw my face, my facial expression change because I saw that, I saw that bastard again but now he's in front of me and I've never stopped moving. And we were talking about the from throwing out things, man, to distract you or get your attention and all that in that video. That, yeah, that video's still on YouTube. That, this is the road that happened on, guys. This is the area where I saw that black dude twice. Unless he had a twin carrying a backpack no shirt on, it was the same thing I saw twice, but one further up the road when I had never turned around to go back. It was in the straight lane. Hey, man, we live in the Smilogram, guys. We live in, we live in a holosphere. Crazy, so crazy. So yeah, I'm a. <coughs> I'm gonna. Get, I'm going deeper. Archaics 2.0 in my chronological presentations, but I'm also bringing back to the table a lot of the data that's in my older videos because people aren't watching them. Yeah, I got a lot of new subs, and if if my new all my new live videos have 25,000 to 30,000. Uh, views within four or five days okay but all all this material that I released is actual data for which many people are actually asking me questions for this material is located in my first 250 videos but my first 250 videos don't have any uh don't have 5,000 views 8,000 views okay I get it y'all are busy but there's so much good graphics and material that's in those earlier videos, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them back to the table and present them as entirely new presentations because I have new data, I have new research, I never stop. And I can put the material together better. 
I can also combine the material from multiple videos. Back then, as I was doing research, videos were released uh, piecemeal. But now, looking back in retrospect, I can put four and five, I can put the data from four or five videos together and put together a simple 20 minute presentation that just blows people's minds. I have no problem doing that. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that for you guys. All right, Walmart. All right. The beautiful leg of Texas pulling in here. You know what? I just, I'm just, often guys, I just park way out here in front of service stations and go in. My van, my van's just too long to, to utilize their parking. Even at Home Depot and Lowe's, I always park way out there. I don't mind walking. It's just, it's just hard to get it in and out, in and out of places. All right, Van Vogue continues. I'm here to visit my, my buddy. He's an old vet named Barry. Uh, he, he's he's up there in age. He's a good buddy of mine. Uh, we're just gonna kick it for a couple hours, and then I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna continue this this Van Vogue on some more deep stuff. We're gonna be talking about changing our frequency. We're gonna be talking about some some good stuff. Things you want to hear about the uh, how we build our informed field how we make the very things that we want in life to happen, happen. Because I'm doing it, guys. You guys know I'm doing it. Started my channel in a wooden shack. Got a lot of toys now. I'm doing, doing what I want to do in life now. Made it happen. Well, that was a nice visit. Me and my buddy caught up. We, we, we just like to shoot the shit. We got these high velocity, uh, high velocity uh, pellet guns. I mean, he's got all kinds of, he got all kinds of weapons. Being a vet, well, I mean, what vet doesn't? I mean, he like he likes to collect them, but, well, we, we don't shoot those. He's got targets out there, and we shoot these. They got scopes. These are high velocity pellet guns. These are pneumatic weapons. You'll be surprised. Uh, we're only using practice, practice, you know, hollow points and and flathead practice uh, pellets. But I do have, in my little arsenal, I do have, I have some pellets that are, that are, they'll take down game. They'll take down game quick. They'll hurt somebody. They're, they're, I mean, that's what they're designed for. Pneumatic weapons or hunting weapons. No, you're not going to take down a stag. And, and you ain't going to do nothing but piss a pig off. But it'll take out a fox. It'll definitely take out squirrel, squirrel all birds. But uh, yeah, small game. They're designed for small game. Yeah, they'll definitely. Uh, well, they're they're now manufacturing pneumatic weapons for like uh, home defense. Oh yeah, they're, they're powerful. Thirteen hundred feet per second. It's awesome. Our targets are far away, and there just doesn't seem, you know, the pellets light enough. It just doesn't seem. It doesn't seem that that there's any uh, lower of elevation. You know, like a twenty-two or a shoot a twenty-two over three hundred yards. That bullet drops. We just not seeing it. We don't see that with the pellets. Those pellets just fly through the air, especially if you got a dart. You're not using hollow points or flatheads. If you're using like steel dart pellets, those things fly beautifully. Don't want to get hit with one though. So Barry and I, we're we're caught up. You guys, see his, you guys will see his property in some of my videos. Work, working on trucks, working on the van, working on cars. I think I was even working on the motorcycle one time. Just wide open space, I like it. But he's way out in the country. That's why it's gonna take me an hour and 10 minutes to get back home. An hour and 10 minutes through back roads, I'm hardly gonna see anything. I'm passing a, uh, I'm passing a, Huge area. It's way out in the middle of nowhere, Lake of Texas. This facility is a uh, is a uh, landfill. Trucks come from many many miles. Come out here, way out in the middle of nowhere. This used to be all flat. Now it's like a mountain. It's huge. And, uh, you already know. 900 years, 900 years from now, archaeologists will be going through that hill, looking, looking it up all about all the stuff about our lives. I think we're weird as hell. 
saw another comment that interested me. A lot of people bring a lot of people bring baggage to archaics and try to fit it, and it's not going to work. Especially like dating the dating dating the biblical flood is so easy, and I have, and I have multiple videos showing different ways how we can derive the exact same date for the flood of Noah, 2239 BC in the month of May. Easy to do. But you got people like Walter Pittman and William Ryan, they put out a book, Noah's Flood, about the Black Sea and all that. All it takes is a little deductive reasoning and logic to know that a lot of misinformation is in that book. I have a video showing all that misinformation, but apparently people are still coming to my channel with that. I thought the Great Flood was 5600 BC crap. It's crazy. Turn these ACs off. There, I don't have to talk so loud now. Yeah, there's a uh, the archaeological. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna present these in videos again so people can understand. Places like Gobleki TP or Gobel Gobelki TP, however you say it, I don't really care. I mean, these places are nowhere near as old as, that's all sensationalist bullshit. And people fall for it, and I understand why you fall for it, because you have no frames of reference. You, you haven't seen the wealth of data from other archaeological sites. It's automatically assumed that sites that are buried, buried so perfectly in dirt and excavated are very old. And then when they find these monolithic sites, because of the way they're built, they date them that way. You see, these are all just educated guesses, but educated guesses are only, are only as good as the educa education that's doing the guessing. It's a problem. That's a real problem. So, the, so there's effigies and artwork that's found in Gobel Gobelki Tipi that looks identical to, to the same things found in Hittite Anatolia on monuments that are dated to the 23rd, 24th, 25th century BC. Identical to exact, exact effigies and symbols that are found in Rongo Rongo on Easter Island that are dated to the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries BC. So, but the, but but, the, but they're not telling you this. They're not telling you that about these because it completely defies the absolute BS that's being put out that Gobe, Gobelki Tipi is this great, fantastically ancient civilization. It wasn't. It, it It's a vapor canopy community. The architecture is all vapor canopy. We find it all over the ancient world. We find huge dolmens all across the Pacific, all throughout Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia, Oceania. We find these dolmens all throughout Southeast Asia. Thailand is packed with them. So is Cambodia. These dolmen structures and all, all this megalithic, smooth, smooth megalithic architecture that's found at Gobelki Tipi is the same that's found in so many other places. Like the old Lion's Gate of Mycenae. And then later the fortress of Mycenae was built around an older structure. It's the same vapor canopy architecture that's found at Hagar Keem on Malta. It's the exact same architecture that's found in all on Malta in what's known as the Hypogeum and Phoenix Hill in China. Guys, vapor vapor canopy constructions were were, were made of monoliths that were all put together. Huge, huge constructions, gigantic boulders that were sh that were shaped, rounded edges. It's a type of architecture that is that's known. This was this was popular during the vapor canopy period. This was with 3895 BC to 2239 BC. This vapor canopy period was 1656 years. Known, known popularly as the pre-flood world. Vapor canopy ended in 2239 BC. This is exactly when Malta experienced a tsunami that shoved 70 ton walls and blocks hundreds of feet, hundreds of feet eastward. How did this happen? It's very easy. It's very easy to understand. Walter Pittman and, and Wilter, William Ryan, in their book, they are right about the cause of the flood. They're absolutely incorrect about the dating. 
It's not 5600 BC, nowhere near it. They needed to put a 5600 BC date on it so they could conform to all the other bogus information that's been put out by archaeologists and anthropologists all throughout, all throughout history since World War II, publishing all these bullshit dates. They had to conform to that or nobody would take them seriously. But Hagar Keem and the island of Malta and its structures, they were destroyed in the 22nd century BC. The tsunami was the creation of the Mediterranean. Prior to that, the Mediterranean was a series of lakes and very, very shallow depressions, rich in valleys. And this is why archeologists have found and claim and published that there are over 300 stone cities at, uh, underneath the Mediterranean today. Why? Who was gonna build a city underwater? It's just a little bit of deductive reasoning, guys. Chronology is so easy once you start putting all the pieces together. Hagar, Hagar Keem, Hagar Keem, Malta, the Hypogeum, all that whole civilization, Sardinia, was all built during the vapor canopy, and it ended when the vapor canopy collapsed. When the vapor canopy collapsed, the Straits of Gibraltar broke, broke the strait broke free, and when it did, it flooded all those valleys in the Mediterranean. You can Google to you can Google to look what the Mediterranean used to look like in ancient times. It was not a sea like it is today. It was a series of valleys. They flooded out, killing all those civilizations, which might which might have uh, it might be the background story to the Atlantis Atlantis myth. But the, all those civilizations were drowned. The water traveled from west to east. This is exactly what's found on Malta. Archaeologists have long known that the destruction on Malta was caused by a series of tsunamis that just totally ended that civilization traveling from west to east. All the gigantic boulders and blocks were blown across. Uh, some Marines have taken pictures of them. Now this isn't anything theoretical, it's all been known. This happened on a Phoenix year, 2239 BC, the Great Flood. The Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea were created in a day at the exact same time. The Black Sea is not older. It cannot be. It's, a, it's the same elevation as the Mediterranean Sea. They're connected through the Dardanelles. So there's so much information. There's so much misinformation in the archeological field. But I mean, it's understandable. It's because history is given to us and archaeology is presented to us compartmentalized. This is what scientists do. They compartmentalize everything and keep every individual study as independent as they can. And then when it's convenient for them, they will merge different discoveries together to paint pictures of what happened in the ancient world. Maybe for the most part they're trying to be honest, but they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. There's not a hint of architecture or, or there's, there's nothing to indicate the human presence beyond the Neolithic prior to 35th century BC. And this has been noted by historians and archeologists as well. So we have these fantastic structures that, I mean, we have these fantastic theories, but once you analyze them, once you really pay attention to the details, they start falling apart. So they come, they, they concoct really ridiculous ideas to help justify uh, their ignorance, such as the very fact that Gobel, Gobel Kitivi was so perfectly buried in dirt. How'd that happen? Well, because archaeology and history, the, the academic versions, do not do not account for liquefaction. They do not account for mud floods. Therefore, it's a genuine mystery to them. So they publicize that, well, the people were religious and they decided that they were going to go ahead before they left and they were going to fill the city back up with dirt oh my god i'm losing brain cells just thinking about that the amount of labor to do that is just prodigious probably requires more time and more man hours to fill the becky tv up with dirt and totally bury it to preserve it than it would to be to than it would to build it to begin with. So ridiculous theories are they, they, they require these in order to justify their positions. I'll show more evidence on video in future videos about that, but there's nothing old about that place. It's no older, it's no older than than uh, cattle huyuk. It's no older than different uh, 
megalithic sites where we found petroglyphs of gigantic birds like vultures that are carrying little people off, humans off. Yeah, during the vapor canopy world, humans had a lot to fear. They grew large too, but they didn't grow, grow as big as the creatures in the animal kingdom. So we have, we have discoveries all the time. I mean, it just takes a little bit of critical thinking, guys. We have discoveries all the time where somebody is absolutely astonished when they're digging in their backyard and they come across the architecture of a building that when it's finally excavated, it's revealed that, oh, well, this right here was, was uh, a structure from the 1700s. Really? So since the 1700s, 11 foot, 11 feet of dirt and topsoil has covered an area to where a new settler would come in and build a home and live there for 40 something years before discovering that they were living on top of a prior settlement. You think this is uncommon? Happens all the time. All the time. Oh, social engineers, structural engineers are coming across, coming across the remains of prior civilizations. They're always blown. How many times have you heard or seen in textbooks where they're excavating in, in Italy somewhere and they dig into a hill or a mound that was covered in trees take they, they take it all the way down underground and they're gonna lay a foundation for a new building and then all work has to stop because somebody found a frieze made of Roman tiles and then finds out well look this is an old Roman bath well what's it doing under 27 feet of dirt if it's on if this happened 2,000 years ago if it was buried 15 centuries ago at the end of the Roman Empire of Byzantium uh, period. So what I'm saying is, is Gobelki Tipi was no deeper than structures that were buried from regional flooding in the 1800s. Just because something is buried totally underground does not attribute to it a, a hyperinflated antiquity. It doesn't. You have to look every single site you have to look at the details compare it with what it looks like in other sites around the world can you go by radiocarbon dating hell no can you go by potassium argon argon dating hell no can you go by dendrochronology hell no can you go by ice core dating hell no all the different relative dating methods have been proven over and over and over to to be absolutely subjective meaning meaning Scientists will run enough tests where they can cherry pick the ones they want to publish and ignore all the rest without telling you that they conducted the other experiments. What is done in the scientific community is precisely what is done in the pharmaceutical industries. When they do a hundred tests on, on, on certain, on certain uh, new medicines or whatever they're doing and then they do not publish all the negative results and only publish the positive ones that are in the in the favor of whatever they're trying to market and sell off to to uh, 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 sell off to the world. This is what they do. They're highly deceptive. They're very good at what they're doing. It. They've been doing it for thousands of years. So don't come to my channel bringing all that baggage about. Well, this is the date of this. This is dated this. If you don't see it in Chronicle and dated a certain way, don't bring it to my channel. I'm not trying to hear it. I, I spent my life putting putting Chronicon together. If you're not willing to read it and check it out and see all the source materials on why we date the things we date and what's been well, what's chronologically sound and what's not, yeah, don't come to my channel acting like you're you're some type of uh, uh, academic guru. Been on YouTube for ten years and you think you're going to be able to to overturn what's been found and put together as a mathematical construct throughout thousands of source materials, yeah, I'm gonna hurt your feelings. I promise you that. I just really need to go on the attack. I don't know why, hey, guys, I'm human too. I don't know why I've been feeling, you know what, we're, we were made by the greatness of our enemies. Why, if I could find a, somebody in academia who was putting themselves out there and had a theory of history that they wanted to, to defend, I would attack them with my own, but I haven't found one. All I have found is a bunch of supposition. I haven't found anybody that's put, putting together a chronological uh, history of the world. 
the closest one I found was Zechariah Sitchin. I dissected his stuff. Anybody wants to defend Sitchin and wants to do a debate on that, I'm going to embarrass you. Yeah, Sitchin's material was terrible. Almost everything chronologically all off and by hundreds of thousands of years. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. New people to my channel, you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that link. I'm gonna post it. It's a search engine where you can, you can ask the questions you want, whatever you're, and it's gonna take you to the videos where I talked about it. I'm so I'm so ambiguous about that. It's so weird. Why would you? Why would somebody gift that to me and then and then want to remain anonymous? I'm so I'm so sus on 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 Trojans. It's crazy. But that's okay. Anything I post, I can also delete. So, with so many new, with so many new subs, seeing a lot of the apocalyptic, the doomsday material, the Phoenix phenomenon, you get you get the wrong impression of my channel. You think I would have grown up? My, my, my channel would have grown this fast if people hadn't already considered many of the questions that you ask. You think you're the only intelligent individuals that would come to Archaics and have the exact same questions? Yeah, it's not all doomsaying. Every single one of us, we have a choice. Every minute of every single day, that choice is laid before us on how we want how we want our existence to go. I believe in full disclosure. I believe people should know what the what the future entails, and I believe that a knowledge of the future was always intended throughout the past, but it's been hidden, it's been obscured, it's been censored. But I feel you should have a choice. Your informed field, you can call it what you want, your soul, your spirit, your Akashic essence, your energy, your aura, it doesn't matter what your frame of reference is. The informed field is an energy field that, that is a part of you. It is a part of your soul. It's a part of your spirit. It's, it's, the, it's the immortal aspect of you, and it contains a fantastic amount of information. Whether you can recall that information or not, the problem with instant recall and the problem with recalling the information from all your past lives, and even this life, your inability to recall a whole bunch of stuff is because of the restrictions of the avatar. Your avatar is, is highly restricted. Everything in the physical world is restricted. But you're informed feeling this, guys. This beautiful lake. Huge, beautiful lake. information that you carry. Your informed field is the reason why you're a sus suspect of everything. Your informed field carries with it every single piece of data that you ever come in contact with. Everything you have ever accepted as true. Your informed field has this, this aura. It, it stays with you. And other people pick up on it. Other people sense it. That's why other people can read your mood even when you, know, even when you don't realize that you have one. We're highly sensitive and intuitive creatures. But that informed field is your friend. It is absolutely interactive with, with the simulacrum itself, which is a reflective medium. It builds for you the world, the world that you project. That's right. All the fantasies in the world will never change your life. All the daydreaming in the world has never changed your life. That's all it is. The building, the building of an informed field, this mat, this this beautiful holographic construct in your mind that you can build things within it. This is how this is how people invent. This is how people innovate. 
This is how people uh, problem solve. You build pictures in your mind, but those pictures carry no power. It's, it's just a blueprint. Blueprints can be read, but they're but if they're not acted on, they don't they don't bear bear fruit. This is what the simulacrum does. It reads your mental blueprint. It knows exactly, it sees what you see. Similacrum's genius for that. I'm not talking about AIX. I'm not talking about artificial intelligence X. Yeah, I'm not, I'm talking about the Similacrum, this neutral field. But it's not gonna do anything for, for, for the individual who's just gonna fantasize, who's just gonna daydream. daydream. It's, it, because all the daydream, all daydreaming does is produce more situations for which you'll find yourself daydreaming. Yeah, the generation of fantasies in your mind is not going to do anything but reflect back as the circumstance of giving you more time to build more fantasies in your mind, which doesn't do anything but give you more time to build more fantasies in your mind, which doesn't do anything but pr but promote the idea to the simulacrum. That's all. That's what you want to do to. Be left alone so you can build more time to build more fantasies for which nothing ever happens. You're in a feedback loop. You did it to yourself. The simulacrum responds to activity. Remember, faith without works is dead. That's an absolute truth. You can have all the faith in the world that somebody's going to save you, but if you don't do something to move into that direction for, for that person to be able to move on your behalf, faith without works is dead. You're entertaining a fantasy. And if that's what you want to do in life, entertain fantasies, the simulacrum will provide many fantasies for you. And you will entertain them. And it will provide more for you. And you'll entertain those as well. And you'll just stay lost in that twilight zone feedback loop that the rest of the world's in right now. But when you move in the direction, when you move your physical avatar in the direction where you, where you want to go, you don't have to do no more. You don't have to do the full, all the work. All you have to do is move in the direction of what you, you're trying to do. And the simulacrum will automatically accept as true that in the physical world something exists because you're physically moving in the direction of the, of the mental picture you built. Building that mental picture is not enough. Moving in the direction of what you've built in your mind is sufficient enough for the simulacrum to now manipulate the holography to alter circumstances in your favor in, every, in its effort to make sure that you accomplish exactly what you need to because the simulacrum is our friend. It's a builder protocol. And a builder protocol wants nothing more than for you to tell the truth. And then for you to tell the truth, that means you build a mental picture, move in the direction you want to go, and the simulacrum will not make you a liar. It will begin knitting circumstances in your life that will co comport with what your final final picture is, what you want to do. Yeah, what you what you've got it down, life is good. Life is good. Life is real good. You can turn this dungeon into a dream. It's awesome. But you can't do it being negative, and you can't do it entertaining negativity. Negative energy is not to be fought. You do not strive with others' negativity. The energy is there, you may as well use it. You gotta be a spiritual alchemist. If somebody provides you a resource, use that resource to your favor. That's what I do. I got all kinds of negativity aimed my way. All kinds of negativity. And I transmute that to opportunity. I transmute it for the opportunity for me to be able to communicate better with other people, for me to be able to use use their negativity to help market market me better, for me to, to transmute their ne negativity to my own personal strength strength by mentally reversing its polarity from negative to positive and then taking it as my own. Yeah. Guys, we are wizards. We are enchantresses. Our powers are phenomenal. It's so sad watching people live lives they don't want to live. It's so sad watching people be so destitute. Don't even understand how powerful you really are. 
It was what's gonna be so sad is at the end of this life. I know it over and over and over, man. We have been reminded only after life is over, when we exit this avatar, before we before we go into another avatar, we see it. We see it so clearly. All the wasted opportunities in our life because we were feeling sorry for ourselves. Or we wanted to play the victim. Or or we just thought all these things were for other people, not for us. Or we let the we let the negative the negative default program programming shove us into a reality tunnel for which we get lost in, in a feedback loop that we never escape. And not escape and not escaping, we just blame on other people. So we fall so we fall into the next avatar, which which begins in that same feedback loop. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I can't I can't denigrate anybody for it. I've been there. I've been there. But even in my darkest days in prison, I was always, I've always been an optimist. And that optimism has allowed me to do many things in the dark for which, for which other people, you know, other, other people get triggered. They just can't, they, they have to find it hard to believe. My education, my ability to recall, recall information that has interested me. I have an eighth grade education. I never made it to ninth grade. I got people trying to investigate me now, trying to see if I really am who I am, and that's all good. Hell, there's even a there's even a website where you can go back and look at people's high schools. I got an email from somebody talking about, uh, we don't know who you are, but we know you're not who you say say claim to be. Uh, we looked up Trinity High School. <laughs> uh, I laughed about that. We looked up Trinity High School. Your name is in there in the roster, but it doesn't show any pictures, and nobody knows who you are. We know that we know that was inserted because uh, this person went deep. I don't know who it is. They went deep, but they got a yearbook. They ordered a yearbook uh, from Trinity High School in Eunice, Texas, and said that I'm not in it. And they're absolutely correct. But this person must be a real moron. I hope they're listening. Because I already admitted in my videos I never made it to high school. Trinity was there, yeah. But I never made it to high school. I ran away when I was 15 years old in middle school. Ninth grade, I only made it, I only made it five days in the ninth grade. And I, I packed my backpack and I left. And this is in my videos two years ago. So people looking into my background can't find me in a high school yearbook. You're not supposed to. I was in prison by the time I was 17 years old. You're not going to find me in a high school yearbook. But if you really want to find me, you can go You can go to Harwood Junior High yearbooks. If you really want to do some research, make sure I am who I am. Harwood Junior High is where I went to school before I ran away. And I'm in the yearbooks. And I don't know, I do not like the smile that I was given. I look goofy as hell in those yearbook pictures. But I don't care. I don't care what you find or what you don't find. It doesn't make it doesn't matter to me. Because the only people that I really want to educate are those who, who apply three abilities for which for which these signatures tell me who they are. If you're if you're not using empathy, imagination, and intuition, then you don't belong on my channel. I don't need you on my channel. And I can tell from your questions that that you that you're dispossessed of, of one or all of these qualities. It's easy to tell. Intuition is the predecessor of knowledge. You should be able to suspect. It is a spiritual ability. It has nothing to do with the intellect. You should be able to to suspect when you're being bullshitted, when you're when you're being given false information. Now, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about people who are lost in negative default programming and dungeon programming and they're jaded and they totally disbelieve their every narrative put before them. I get that. I get that. I do. But yeah, it's all. Uh, there, there's a lot of hope, but you're going to have to embrace that. If all you're going to do is look at the dark, like I said in another video, if all you're going to do is study the dark, all you're ever going to do is discover shadows. That's not what life's about. I'm not afraid of the Phoenix phenomenon. I'm not afraid when it comes. I'm not afraid of Nemesis X object. I don't know if I'll be alive. I'll be in my 70s. I'll be 73 years old when that, when that happens. 
I'll be 67 in the Phoenix returns. I'm not scared about all that. I still haven't found anybody on YouTube that knows anything about the Phoenix history or Phoenix chronology uh, prior to uh, the old Greek references where they were calling it the were calling it a bird. Yeah, that was very late in history, 25 centuries ago, when Phoenix was referred to as a bird. Now, that was very late in history. Prior to that, it was basically a phenomenon. It was attached to the concept of the of the destruction of the world and, it, and its rebirth. Which is why, you know, 3895 B.C. was year one of the Annus Mundi calendar, and that was the great reset of Genesis, Genesis chapter one. Right after that reset, suddenly the Adamu appeared. The Jews in Babylon turned the story of the Adamu into Adam and Eve. The original Babylonian verses don't have that. But that's okay, it's still a good story. We can still learn a lot from it. But the word Adam was turned into a pronoun by the Jews. It's actually, it's actually Adamu, the old Akkadian word for mankind. So the current version of mankind was introduced into the simulacrum after the reset for which Genesis 1-1 talks about. Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. For those who are, for those of you who are theologians, you know what gap theory is. I'm referring to gap theory, the, the great vast destruction that happened, for which separates Genesis chapter one verse one and Genesis chapter one verse two. Tohu wa bohu. So, in order to see and perceive the positive, positivity in this world, you have to actively do it. You can't just go go to somebody's. Go, go to somebody's YouTube channel and automatically assess all their data and, or, or ask questions and you want all the substance but you don't want to do the searching. I don't have any patience with people like that. I don't have any patience for people who come to my channel and ask deep penetrating questions not realizing that you're the 419th individual that asked the exact same thing. And you ask it thinking that you're asking something intelligent. <clears throat> not knowing that the answer has been provided so many different times. So yeah, I'm, I'm about done answering questions, guys. I might just go into full time, just releasing a mass amount of information. I know no one's ever gonna catch, catch all the way up, that's cool. Not meant to, but I'd like to get all my data out. I still got a long way to go. I got a lot of information I have not released yet, especially on the Phoenix. I gotta do it. I gotta get all the Phoenix data out before I, I, I fully exploit the Nemesis X 2046 data. Got a lot, I got a lot on that ain't I haven't released. But I can do it pretty fast. Different things in my life just keep popping up. I got some really good books I gotta look at. Just not enough hours in a day, guys. I just gotta relax and take it slow. Yeah, there's a, uh, there is a latent power within the human being that allows us to do great things. Me, I wanted the powers of memory, recall. I wanted to, to be able to, I wanted to be, a, be able to be highly perceptive to understand where I'm being lied to in the establishment literature. I wanted to be able to to read a text and assess its value for its content and not its commentary. These are the things that I wanted and I got them because I said I moved in that direction. And the more I moved in that direction, the more God, the Oversoul, whatever you want to call him, put things into my possession that allowed me to learn even more, to assess more data, to data mine more more, more material. I was able to put disparate pieces together that other historians have remain separated because they didn't know that they were researching just different different phenomena that was all related. That's how I wanted to live my life and I did it. Good Lord, good Lord had to, had to make sure that I went to prison to do it and so be it. So be it. I'm cool with that.
But yeah, for future reference, some of you guys want to come to my channel promoting other chronologies or other other ideas and theories, please cite your sources. We'll come to my channel throwing stuff out. Especially stuff you can. And just because another YouTuber says something something happened doesn't mean it's true. So lately, lately I've been, I've been noticing I I've been I've been paying more and more attention. I've been paying more and more attention to other people's channels lately and what they're promoting and what information that they're claiming supports their their position you know i've only been doing that lately since i was attacked i wasn't attacked for my research i'm still waiting for that i was attacked for all uh, personal reasons several people were in on it and it, and, it, and it boosted my channel by several thousand th subs so i want to thank them but it also opened my eyes up to some of these other channels you know, I'm beginning to wonder. I mean, should I should I stay on the sidelines when I have absolute proof that I can back up with multiple sources and a calculator that other channels are putting out deliberate information, information that can be easily easily shown to be false? I mean, am I promoting the lies that they put out by not telling you guys the truth? This is where I'm at today, right now. This is what's on my mind right now. Because I already know, as soon as I go on the offensive, I'm going to make a lot of enemies gonna cause a lot of drama but it doesn't matter man 10,000 can come up and oppose me but I've already put Chronicon together my research is done all I got all I got to do is saber rattle so I don't know man that's where I'm at they watch this YouTube channels man that are you know what you want to put out some bullshit you, you can expect to get called out on it I don't know what you guys think about that. It's not really my nature, but you know, it's a. Uh, somebody made a comment. Somebody made a comment that kind of, kind of ate at me. If you know something is a lie, but you don't tell people and warn them about it, aren't you equally as guilty as the liar? Holy shit! Why'd you put that comment on my channel? I've studied philosophy. I can name a bunch of them. And philosophy deals with a lot of moral issues like this. I don't know. I do know this. The YouTube algorithm really, really loves controversy. Like, like with me right now. I mean, uh, several channels that, are, that have tagged me have violated the, the YouTube policies. I've looked all into it, I saw what they did. I mean, you, you can tell the truth and I don't mind. I don't mind, I don't mind you telling people one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the reasons why I went to prison, I don't give a damn. But uh, adding details to it and adding felonies that never happened or existed or, or adding, adding severity to it that's not true, it's not cool at all. That type of misinformation that type of misinformation get your channel canceled. So I've been looking into it, but also I've also been talking to a lot of people who basically put themselves in my way and were educating me on some things. And I had no idea until I looked at the analytics and saw what they, were, that, that they showed me. I had no idea that controversy on YouTube actually boosted the RPMs, all, all the, all the, the uh, oh my God. And YouTube gets to put ads on all these videos. So when I looked at the math, this guy educated me, and I looked at this math and all that. Oh my, I'm all for it now. Hell, not only am I all for, not only am I all for all these people attacking me, but hell, now that I see how this algorithm works, oh my God, it's not the attackers that get the benefit. They don't get the benefit of all of the algorithm. It's the it's the one being attacked. Oh my God. The math doesn't lie, guys. In the past 14 days, I got 6,000 new subs. The math doesn't lie. Now, yeah. So that type of controversy really does, really does help. So like I told you guys, I'm all about, I'm all about the dissemination of the truth, but I'm also all about making sure that archaics is run like a business. Because it is, it has to be, it has to be. So I can't take things personal. And I get that. Well, but you know what? It might be time for me to go on the offensive. 
just to just to just so I can just so I can instigate some of these other channels to go ahead and attack me. This sure looks like, yeah, I don't. It's crazy. Some of you guys, especially you other content creators, you guys know. You already know. You already know how how much money can be made when you get fifty to seventy thousand views every forty eight hours. You already know. You look at your own analytics. So, yeah. So I, I keep seeing these comments. People coming to my channel throwing out well, such and such such as says this such as such that says this listen nobody nobody is an authority on anything <laughs> if they don't have the receipts anybody can say anything. anybody can say something on YouTube but you gotta have the receipts you gotta be able to say okay well, look because of this because of this because of this now that doesn't mean that there aren't some quacks on YouTube putting stuff out and then there's quacks listening to them and accepting everything is true because they think that person is an authority. That's totally different. The world's full of morons. You can't even argue against those people. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, th this is a van vlog. I'm just ranting. But at the same time, my new listeners, you have to know, I have a lot of videos that go into this aspect of the human soul that has the ability to bring forth something from nothing. The ability to call forth things into existence that did not exist the day before. You have this innate ability to modify your environment. You can change all kinds of conditions in your life, but you gotta do it. Everything comes back to you. You cannot rely on external sources. Every single individual that cried out praises to Jesus was censured. Pay attention to what you read in the New Testament. All these people praise Jesus for healing them. Thank you, Jesus. You, oh, oh, all oh, man. Jesus censured every single one of them. He told them the truth. I didn't heal you. Your faith has made you whole. This is so what modern day modern day Christianity is so watered down. It's pathetic. I'm embarrassed to call myself a Christian. It's so pathetic. The teachings of Jesus, the parables of Jesus, they're very, very clear. You are an immortal being. You're a pilgrim. You are the prodigal son in the illustration of, of, of that parable. You're him. He wasn't telling you a story about somebody else. In the, in the story of the prodigal son, in that parable, a parable is an image of truth. In that parable, Jesus was telling you who you are. You're not the other one that didn't leave. You're the pilgrim. That's why you're here in the smell of it. You chose to be here. You left. And when you left home, this is where you came. Yeah, man, this is a beautiful place. But you gotta make it so. Even in the dungeons of Texas prison, I still had a good time. I still, man, I was in love with life. Man, I was learning and discovering. And, man, you guys just don't know the euphoria that I felt all the time, man. Reading, researching, editing. Man, just learning so much material, putting it all together. Yeah, those of you who haven't read my Return of the Fallen Ones book, you don't even know what research is. You haven't read a book like that ever. Absolutely packed. Thousands of data points all put into a synthetic history. Yo, know, it's, it's crazy, guys. I don't toot my own horn often. But a lot of these books that are being published that are put out there are absolute bullshit. Total crap. It's sad. And what's really sad is the state of our education in America in the last 70 years has allowed for the type of books in the publishing industry that are passed off as fact and believed by the people. That's the real problem. The real problem, the real problem are those morons who own all the publishing companies. Yeah, they're all the same ethnicity, same group of people. Those morons there have basically dumbed down the world. Therefore, when somebody with just half an intellect puts a half-baked theory together and publishes it, publishes it, 
they don't have to say it's fact. They don't have to say it's fiction. They just publish it, and they're going to get a whole plethora of morons looking at it and believing it. Then within 20 or 30 years, a whole slew of authors are going to publish books to copy, copycat that stuff. And it's just, it just becomes a huge, you know, you know I ain't got to say it. I'm Jason of Arcades, and I'm absolutely disgusted with what's passed off as academic and what's passed off in the publishing uh, industry as our history. Even our, I, I'm disgusted with these authors. You know who, I'm not even talking about academia now, I'm also talking about this alternative history, especially the ancient alien BS. Every bit of that can be shown. One of my, one of my greatest favorite writers is David Hatcher Childers. But listen to me closely. He's one of my favorite writers because when I was in prison, he traveled He traveled the world and I was able to go with him because I live in books. I was able to travel to all the airports, travel to all the ha hamlets and villages and ancient ruins and cities, all these complexes, these hotels. I was able to go with David Hatcher Childers because that's how he writes his books. When he's researching things about mysteries in Central America, Veracruz State, he goes there. He talks to the local historians. He talk, He buys books that were published from authors that live there. And he cites them. Love David Hatcher Childress's books. His research is phenomenal. Chronicon is packed with all kinds of historical and archaeological and ancient mystery data he has. But David Hatcher Childress, he contracted with ancient aliens. So he pushes the ancient alien agenda. He just doesn't push it hard like the other guys. But... That doesn't mean I can I can compartmentalize my my own uh, how how I view his material. I can love his writings, his publications, and books. At the same time, I can tell you that he's basically an intellectual traitor for falling for that ancient aliens bullshit because he knows better. Just like Graham Hancock, you push anything ten thousand BC, you're a, I'm calling you out. You're a moron. You're just a moron. There is nothing in archaeology, anthropology, or history that shows any human structures or settlements that are that are beyond the Neolithic. No human writing, no advanced technology, nothing beyond the 35th century BC. That's the threshold. That's where all the mystery happened. That's where the whole Anunnaki history exploded, blew up. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, everything I'm telling you right now is itemized in my 50-something Anunophiles videos. In the Anunophiles videos, I basically smashed that whole ancient alien deal. Fact after fact after fact after fact. Now some of you, some of you get triggered with the fact that I show all these historians, archaeologists, all these ancient traditions that show who the Anuna were. And you get triggered for that. I'm sorry. But I can't lie to you. I can't make it up. The entire story from around the world says the same thing. The ancient, the ancient goddess worship, worshiping vapor canopy cultures and civilizations were not Caucasian. And as soon as white people showed up on the scene, they were called a Nuna. They had long beards. And in all the ancient statue, statuary, they were shown with gigantic lapis lazuli, lazuli eyes. Lapis lazuli is a mineral that is blue. And the ancients depicted the Anuna as bearded Caucasians. Later on, the Egyptians, who couldn't grow facial hair, had their pharaohs, they, they, they built wooden beards inlaid with gold and gems as a status symbol. They were copying the older Caucasian Anuna. But yeah, the whole story is a non-Caucasian world that is absolutely culture-shocked when Caucasians suddenly appeared. Because of these giant oval-eyed, uh, these, these round-eyed uh, statues, later in history, about 600 years after these events, Semitic cultures invented, basically called them the Watchers. They called them Watchers because they had owl eyes, big old eyes. It's the exact same thing you find in Japanese art today. When you look at somebody who is meant to be a white person in Japanese uh, anime art, what do you see? You see big old eyes. 
when they represent themselves, what do you see? You see oval, almond-shaped, slanted eyes. Yes, man, every culture has done this. They have over-accentuated. They have overcompensated for anatomical features. Do it all the time. Because those are, those, those are racial identifiers. Yeah, so the Shimzu whore, they're all Caucasians. This is, and this, I mean, this is exactly what the historians found. This is, this is, this is why, this is why the Castilian and some of the House of Aragon, the Castilian, Spanish, the Conquistadors, they arrived in Mexico. They go holler at Montezuma. The people think he think he's a Cortez is a return Quetzalcoatl. There's no way that 600 and something armored, armored Spanish Caucasian conquistadors could have ever taken on 2.5 million Aztec warriors. There's no way. But that's what happened. And the reason they were successful was because many of those Aztecs were convinced that Cortez, with his blue eyes and white skin, and dark beard was the returned was the return was it was was one of the returned gods of the ancient world the same story all throughout mexico central america all throughout south america they called him veracoca or boquica all throughout all throughout uh, colombia peru the same story is told over and over and over the builders of Cuzco, the builders of San Cornelia, or, uh, I can't even pronounce it, all these, all these South American metropolises made the Heliolithic Maritime Empire, giant boulders. Same stories told all around the world. And it's not, and it's not Caucasians telling the story. It's the locals. That's what's crazy about it. People get triggered when they hear about this. <clears throat> no ancient aliens came to the, came, came inside the Smiller from dead. They came from another continent. They were Caucasians. And, and, they integrated with the people. The whole story of the Nephilim, the whole story of Genesis 6 was because it was written from the perspective of non-Caucasian people. The people of Genesis were not white. The people of Genesis before the flood were non-Caucasians. So they recorded it. This is where we get the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are very specific. Lamech, Lamech saw when Noah was born, he was shocked. And he he accused his wife, Bittenosh, and told and told he accused Bittenosh that he says this is no son of mine. He doesn't look anything like me. He looks just like one of, one of the one of the sons of God. You have lain with one of the watchers. This is what he said. Why was well, described? Noah is described right into there. Little white baby. Lamech wasn't expecting a white baby, and Bittenosh was terrified because she has a little white, white baby in her crib, and she has not had sex with anybody, but, but Lamech, or maybe she did, and it was one of the watchers, she thought she couldn't get pregnant, because they were a different race. Either way, either way, the story of Noah is background story to the birth of an entire race, which was Caucasians integrating racially with the people of the pre-flood world when they showed up. This is why the story of Oannes, of ancient, the ancient Babylonian story, shows that when Oannes arrived to Babylonia, he arrived by sea. It's because he came by ship. Enki didn't come in a spaceship, he came in a wooden ship. And when he arrived, he came with 50 Anuna. This story was preserved all throughout the ancient world. Later on, it was the fifty. It was the fifty people uh, of uh, uh, in the in the ship with Danaus or Danau, however you say his name, ancient Greek. Later on, it was Jason and the fifty Argonauts. It's a very old story. But yeah, the Anuna files, guys. You can go into the Anuna files. You can learn all that. Learn every bit of that. One of my most no, it's not one of my. It is my most ignored playlist. My most ignored playlist is gems and enigmas. Maybe I need to break that material up. I don't know. Maybe I should redo all my playlists. But my playlist, gems and enigmas, is where all the fascinating stuff 
uh, historical stuff, just weird, anomal anomalous things that most people haven't been able to put an explanation with. I provide explanations as to how these things were possible. Because we live in a simulated holography. Gems and Enigmas has a lot of video, like 70, 80 videos. It's, and it's the most least watched of all, which is cool. So I did a van vlog for you guys today that was totally unanticipated because I didn't even know till last night that I was going to go visit, visit my buddy. I, I took two different routes. I went by way of 222 and 150 on the way there, but on the way back, I went by, I went by, way, by way of uh, 190 and 2296 to get back. All these are old country roads. Yeah, man. Love my country roads. I like country too. Don't get me saying, don't get me started. I will sing some country music. Meanwhile, my rant is over with. I will be uh I will be taking note of the comment section on this on this video just to get a general idea of where you guys are at. I mean, you know what, I don't want to be a liar. But if somebody's putting out deliberate information, and I know and I know it's misinformation. I mean, what should I do? What should I do? It's beautiful out here. I'll give y'all a look. I'll give y'all a little look. It's beautiful out here. Huntsville's right behind me. I'm, head, I'm heading toward Willis. It's a beautiful country out here. But with that, guys, I'm sorry, man, if I got a little dark. I'm human too, guys. I am. But hey, Overall, I just wanted some of my new my new listeners to know. Listen, the answers for your questions are already on the channel multiple times. You're, you're, there's no there's no reason to believe that when you come to my channel that you're the only intelligent person that has asked intelligent questions. Believe me, no one would be subbing to my channel if I had not already answered so so many of these questions. Yeah, dude, dude, listen, people ab people abandon those who bore them. So. If people aren't getting the answers to their questions, then they're going to get bored. If they're going to get bored, they're going to abandon that individual. You don't see that happening in arcades. So evidently, there's value here. You just haven't found it. And I get that because there's a lot of videos. A lot. So, uh, Oh, also, uh, guys, all the Super Packs are out. Uh, I sent five free Super Packs out this week just because donations have been good. Um, I have a book I will be donating. I'm going to do a little short video. It's a really nice, expensive book, but it's on a subject matter that I really don't, I'm not into. It's called Ancient Healing. I am going to do a video, and I am going to donate this book. I'm going to mail it to anywhere in the world to where you live. But what I'm going to, what I'm going to want is you to provide one comment as to why this book would be valuable to what you're doing in life, why you, why you should have this gigantic encyclopedia called Ancient Healing that goes through all the ancient healing techniques of all these different cultures throughout history. You tell me in a comment why this book is important to you. We're going to let you guys decide who gets that book. Whoever has the most hearts and likes, whoever has, whoever has the most likes, I don't even know if they let you guys do hearts. I don't know. Whoever has the most likes on their comment by a certain time, I'm going to announce the. I'm going to announce who's going to receive that book, and I'm going to mail it to them. And I'm going to do this periodically with other books as well that I don't really want in my library because I know I'm never going to read them, but they're they're of great value to other people. So be ready for that video too. Don't put those. Don't put the reasons why you should get that book in this in this video. That's for the. That's for the next little short video I'm going to release. Anyway, guys, peace out.